Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on um, porch time today. Uh, once again, I'm sitting here. It's about, <laughs> got a heat index of 103 today. It, it's hot, you know. Um, seems like this year has just been hotter than it normally is. But, um, you know, on porch time today, I've been kind of thinking about a particular subject now for a little while and uh, those of you who know me know that July is kind of a rough month for me and you know during this particular time in my life I usually try to I try to reflect on something that uh, that brings some kind of encouragement to me or some kind of joy in my life and when I do get to this point, I look back in life, and I look back at, uh, I love to read, and I've been reading a lot here lately, because that seems to, uh, seems to take my mind off of things, it uh, kind of takes me back to wherever, I, whatever I'm reading about. And I've been doing a lot of reading about the Depression era and how people survived during that particular time, um, what families went through, and how they dealt with the struggles that life had to throw at them. And you know, I'm a little bit encouraged by the lifestyle that, uh, that Wanda and I are living here because so many of the things that I'm reading about is uh, is exactly how we're living today and these people survived during a hard time in this country um, one of the things I just got through reading was uh, was about saving seeds they talked about how that um, there was very little money during that time and if you had money and could come across some then it was only spent on a necessity it was never spent on anything that uh, that brought pleasure or you know, wasn't wasted it was spent only on necessities I read one uh, one account of an individual who uh, lived up in the uh, mountains of Tennessee and he talked about how that uh, the demise of of the seed industry and how it had come about just in his lifetime he talked about how that everybody planted a garden uh, because he said if you didn't you just didn't eat just simply because there was no money to go to the store with and if you did go to the store, then, you know, there usually wasn't a lot there anyway. He said, so most homesteads back then raised predominantly everything that they was going to be eaten. And he said, you know, what you did was you saved seeds. And you saved lots of seeds. You didn't just save uh, some seeds. He said, you saved lots of seeds, and you picked your biggest and your best because to save seeds from because your life depended on that. And, you know, as I sit here and read that story, I was, I was moved because these people understood what it was to survive. They knew that they didn't eat their biggest and best. They saved the biggest and the best because that's where their seed stock for the next year come from. And just like this one article uh, read, they saved an overabundance of seeds. Now, as I begin to read into this particular article, this guy would explain how that they saved extra seeds because 
Uh, you never knew if, um, if if rodents was going to get into your seed. You never knew if a, if a uh, you know, and this shows you the mentality of people during, during that time. You didn't know if your neighbor had had a crop failure or something happened to their seeds and they needed a few seeds to plant with. Or the kids, if you had, if you was an older person and you had some children and, and they were, you were trying to help them get started on a home place, then they needed some seeds. You always had extra seeds. Um, or if you had a crop failure that year and you needed seeds for the next year even, um, you always saved extra seeds. And, you know, I was kind of moved by the mentality of the people back then. They, they had a heart for others as well as knowing that if they did not do these things, then they themselves might not survive. I read stories about where families would, would plant pretty good pieces of property on their land there and so that they would have enough for themselves and then they would have enough to take a little bit of stuff into town and to sell it and to be able to buy a few things like maybe some sugar or some flour or something like this um, so that they would be able to uh, have things to survive with. And I read about how some of the decisions they would make would be um, instrumental in making sure that they survived. Uh, like right now, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, it's 103 out here today and literally burning up sitting here. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, during this particular time of the year, they began to prepare for winter. Uh, here it is. It's um, going for mid-July. And there was a very crucial time for these people because they were getting firewood because they knew, I mean, they didn't have central heat and stuff like that back then. The only way they had a heat in their house was, was fire, was wood because a lot of them didn't have money to buy kerosene and what kerosene they did have went for the lamps and stuff. A lot of them would, um, would, would make candles from wax and bees and um, uh, pork fat and beef fat and stuff like that. They had a mixture that they used to make all this stuff with and they had candles for for lighting at night and being able to see and you know and I'm, I'm I think about how different it was then but yet never once have I read where these people complained they, they all talk about how blessed they were. And, you know, when we sit here today in our country and we talk about, uh, we talk about how hard we have it and we're just a couple of generations from that time and, and these people had nothing close to what we had and yet they talked about how blessed they were. And, you know, that kind of stops and makes you think a little bit about, um, about where our priorities are. You know, here at Deep South Homestead, we're all about saving seeds. Um, you know, as I read into this article, it talked about uh, when hybrids become on, come on the scene. This particular gentleman talked about he said how so many people was fooled because all of a sudden hybrid seeds came out and they were, oh, they were, uh, they were disease resistant. Uh, you know, you didn't have to worry about certain diseases hitting your plants because these plants have been, uh, been bred up to where they didn't, uh, you didn't have to worry about diseases. And he said people fell prey to that. He said, not me, but many of my friends and neighbors and everybody fell prey to that. They went in and bought all these seeds and they planted their crops. And the next year, uh, it kind of struck them because they realized they didn't have any seeds saved because they were hybrids and they couldn't save them. 
and they began to uh, come to a realization that they had been taken. But the truth of the matter was, he said, they had to go back to the feed stores. He said many of the feed stores at that time was only carrying a lot of different hybrids. He said, now they still was a few heirlooms around. He said some people was able to still get some heirloom seeds at that time. But a lot of people just said, well, you know, if I can get them at the feed store, then there's no need to me going to, to worrying with all this hassle of trying to save these seeds and stuff. And, and the article went on to state that uh, these people eventually fell prey to the whole system of uh, just letting the seed stores provide your seeds. And as a result, a lot of the seed saving techniques, a lot of the old family heirlooms were lost. And he talked about how that um, he saw the demise of, of, of the gardening industry, the home gardener, uh, go down the drain so to speak, and how that people would would look at him and say, man, why are you continue saving these seeds? We're there. They have seeds up here at the store, you know. And he said, yeah, but you just don't understand. Uh, you can't save those seeds. And, and they said, but it doesn't matter. The stores will always have seeds now. And, you know, he talked about how over the next few, you know, the next years, the decades that um, he saw a complete transformation in people and how that their their mindset had changed and I began to think about today how that uh, we have fallen prey to this very same thing here and I noticed I look around today and I go to the feed stores and stuff like this and it's the same way they have all these uh, hybrid seeds, genetically modified seeds, and um, super coated seeds, and you know all kinds of bred up seeds for everything. And you talk to them about. Uh, I made the comment. I asked. I asked the guy at one of the feed stores. I said, "Do y'all have any multiplying onions sets to put out?" And he said, man, we hadn't had any multiplying onion sets in years and years. He said, I don't even know where you'd get them at. And then I thought, wow. I remember the day when you went to the seed stores and they'd have a, a number three wash tub sitting there just full of sets. So a lot of things has changed. And as I sat back and read some of these old stories back during the Depression eras and not only the Depression era, but before then. I go back to the early 1900s and uh, late 1800s and read different stories about how people uh, how people got by. Because, folks, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm concerned about, about a lot of things. And one of them is the food source. Uh, about where are we going to get seeds from. That's why I'm so frantically saved seeds. One of them is currency. Um, how will we buy what we need? Everything seems to be leading toward, um, and I do a tons of research, y'all. I spend too much time on the internet. I really do. But I want to know. And one of the things I'm finding in the New World Order is cryptocurrency. They're talking about how that they're trying to bring in different cryptocurrencies uh, to replace our current currencies with um, bitcoins, you know, in cryptocurrencies, and and this is not new, y'all. Um, a lot of this stuff was implemented about 30 years ago, and I've read some articles about. Uh, about cryptocurrency and it talked about how that they when they started this particular type of currency that um, they hoped in 30 years that the plan was in 30 years that it would uh, it would take the place of the current currencies in the world and, uh, and I looked at the date and when I did the 30 years from then it was 2018 
And everywhere I look today, and everything I hear from different people, even my neighbors here, um, friends of mine, different ones talking about bitcoins and mining for bitcoins and uh, um, my block mining and all this kind of stuff and uh, cryptocurrencies and things like that. This is something that seems like it's just blown up in the last year or two about people wanting to get paid in bitcoins now and stuff like that. And Y'all, it kind of, it just bothers me. Um, maybe I'm just old school. I don't know. But I'm just not ready for that move yet. You know, I'm not ready to take that dive over into into that type of a of a lifestyle. Um, I know our currency is not the best currency in the world. Just like back in the Depression era, when these people in the in the 1929, you know, Black Tuesday, um, how everything was lost in a day, and People panicked. People were taking their lives. They were just—they were doing all kinds of things when the when the currency collapsed. And uh, I sit back and I think, what's going to happen here if our currency again collapses? And people are so deep in debt. You know, Wanda and I started this series we've been wanting to do about financial freedom. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be I'll be the first to admit I don't know that there is a such thing as ever being financially free, because you always owe taxes. You know, you, you have medical bills, you have all these kind of things that you, you're going to have if you live. Your car's going to break down. You know, refrigerator's going to go out. You know, you have to have some sort of emergency funds set up for that stuff. And Wanda and I try to do the best we can. I know, I know we don't have much money, but. We see needs in our life, and, and we try to weigh out what's the best way to handle something. What's the best financial move for us? And at this point in our life right now, we don't see that the best financial move for us is to go in a direction where we get paid in Bitcoin. We just, uh, we just don't see that. You know, and we may get left behind. I don't know. But, you know... There was people back in the in the at the turn of the century and after the Great Depression who faced these very same issues, and we Wanda and I have made our minds up that uh, you know if, if if the world goes to hell in a handbag, then um, some sort of life changing event takes place if the currency collapses, and uh, you know if we owe a note on something, then. They can just have it back. We try not to let the notes be on anything that, uh, you know, that we can't afford to let go of, like our land or our home or anything like that. You know, things like vehicles and, well, the tractor, different things like that, that stuff don't bother me. If I can't pay for it, I don't care. You know, they can come get it. I don't care. Uh, I'll use it as long as I have it. And I'll look at it if I can't pay for it. It's just being a rental. I rented it. And... I got my use out of it, but I'm trying to learn not to stress over these things because today I watch a lot of different YouTube channels and I look at people talking about uh, how they can't get out of some of their situations and, and, and y'all, my heart goes out for these people. Um, you know, and, I, I, and Wanda and I are no exception. We're sitting here on a homestead that's, you know, that's worth a lot of money. But, you know, we're pretty much, because of our age, our physical health and stuff like that, we're pretty much bound. I don't have the physical health to get out and rebuild all this. If something comes through here, a storm or, you know, some sort of life-changing event takes place and I lose all of it, I've just lost it. You know? I'm back in the same position that these people were back in the 1920s or the early the turn of the century. Uh, there was no such thing as insurances and things like that back then. If a person lost what they had, they just had to start over, do the best they could do. And in a way, I feel like that that life is going to come back to that. Um, I feel like that at some point in life, uh, I, I, I witnessed 
after Hurricane Katrina, how people lost everything they had. Uh, they had big insurance policies. They had all this stuff they paid, and when Hurricane Katrina come through, it didn't pay them anything. And I watched people just about go start raving crazy, talking about how they paid into these insurance companies for all these years, and when the hurricane tore their house up, and the houses got washed away, the insurance companies didn't pay them anything because uh, they said that they didn't have, I mean, one instance was they talked about um, some of the houses washed off the blocks and just got washed away and just tore up. And, and they told them, says, well, you didn't have flood insurance. And they said, well, it, it was a, it was a hurricane. You know, they came in, the wind and everything. They said, yeah, but it was the water that actually did the damage. And you didn't have flood insurance. You had wind and hail damage and fire damage and all these kind of things, but you didn't have flood damage. And these people lost their entire homes and did not get one dime out of insurance companies. And they sacrificed their whole life paying for these insurance companies. And, and people, that's, you know, that's what, that's what we face. You know, life is a gamble. And... You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with making provisions because one and I make provisions. I mean, we bought this tractor here. I have life insurance on that tractor. I have um, I have insurance on it if a tree falls on it, and tears it up, if it catches on fire and burns, it's paid for. You know what I mean? Those are just wise moves. But there are no guarantees in life. That's why the Amish communities are so well suited. Um, to deal with events, if something happens, they all come together. They help each other rebuild. You know, we don't see that in the, the common people and the common popula population today. Uh, those days, family got together, used to, and helped each other get started and things like that. You don't see that anymore. Um, and you know, I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit concerned. I see some things coming down the pipe that uh, that bothers me and I try not to let it bother me but knowing the things that I know I have a particular gift from God I've always had it that's one of the reasons I was so successful in um, construction um, was because I could walk up to a set of blueprints and a house I was going to build. I could see that house built before I ever built it. I could look at them prints. I could see every problem that I was going to have throughout that house. And it kind of helped me know where to put my most effort into as far as building this particular home, where I was going to have problems at. And, um, it made me extremely successful when I built houses. But you see, that's something that happens for me in everything in my life. I, I see things that I sometimes wish I didn't see. And it causes me to be extremely concerned about things that I see coming down the pipe. And I hope and pray that, um, that those of you who watch this video here, you know, I hope and pray that y'all don't fall prey to some of the things that former generations have fell prey to, like not saving seeds, you know, because you need to save seeds. So one and I do, we actually sell seeds to different people. And we feel like that, you know, this is something that we need to do to keep different, uh, not only keep different strains of seeds available today, but to make sure that, like teaching on YouTube like we do about being self-sufficient, it's, it's, it's vitally important for us. I mean, that's why we do this, because we know what's happened in earlier generations. Uh, there's been a big uh, generation gap just in our generation from the time we were born up until to the present day. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this series about financial freedom is because we're going to try to, we, we gave y'all some of our childhood experiences. Then we're going to talk about our teenage years. And our teenage years may take a couple of different series to get through. I'm not 100% sure yet because a lot of stuff, uh, that's some really big molding time in your life about 
uh, about where you're going to end up at in life as your teenage years. And, uh, it, you know, some people made some comments on our first one there about how true it was to that if you could take something and do it with a child before they're five years old, then you had them for life. And a lot of, and I, and I made a comment to some of the people that there are lots of, uh, there are lots of countries out there that, that teaches if you give me your child up to the age of five years old, then I have him for life. And that's true. That's extremely true. Um, you know, so we're, we're doing this series because we want to help people understand the mindset that it takes to become as financially free as possible. Now, you know, there's always going to be some bills, but that's just our desire in life. We want to make sure that there are people out there that that's struggling. And we've had lots of people already contact us privately in different ways and talk about Danny and Wanda. What a blessing y'all have been to us talking about this. We didn't have this kind of childhood and we see now how that we can make changes in our lives and stuff like this. So, you know, that was encouraging. And again, it uplifts us when we get those kind of things. But, um, but you know, today on Porch Time, I just wanted to kind of touch back on a little bit of the past histories and what people dealt with and and my friends today save seeds your life could depend on it one day um, seed saving is extremely important living a frugal life is important don't fall prey to the thing to the saying that the uh, that the store is always going to have seeds because they may not you know so I'm going to leave y'all with that on porch time today and tell you how much I appreciate you stopping by and let's sit down here having this chat this morning and enjoying that cup of coffee with me. Um, it's been a blessing to, to sit here and chat with you this morning. So thank you from Deep South Homestead. <laughs>